The last two years have been the best and worst years of my life. This is how I recovered from the worst burnout that I've ever experienced. Here's what I did. I changed my environment, pursued what I love, and got a community online and in person. So as we all know, 2020 wasn't exactly sunshine and rainbows, but before the world fell apart, I was just your average student. My grades were good enough, school was moderately easy for me, and things were just going as you'd expect, right on track without any question or confusion. And while it may sound like things were fine and worry-free, to me, things felt stagnant and like, and like life was just passing me by. My life was by no means hard, but Things weren't really exciting either, you know? One of the key mistakes that I made back then was I became complacent. I was no longer challenging myself and was just simply going through the motions. And honestly, I think that's one of the hardest things. When you don't feel good, but nothing is bad, so, so you don't really know what to feel. But all of this changed when I discovered this thing called self-development, leveling up and, and finally decided that enough was enough. It was time to finally take control back into my hands. We're talking Jocko Willink, Ali Abdal, pretty much the self-help starter pack. And honestly, I loved it. I loved the challenge and the thrill of knowing that I'm doing something that nobody else around me is doing. I'm really glad that I found this content because it really pushed me and, you know, made me take a step back when things were just fine. And without this push, I have no idea where I'd be right now probably still just getting by. So going into 2020, I changed things in my life and changed my environment. And I don't just mean physically, but more so the environment of people that I hung out with and the environment of content that I consumed. And I went all in on this. I was waking up at 5 a.m. going to the gym. I was taking cold showers and just doing anything I could to level up. And by no means was this easy, but my environment was different. And this was one of the best decisions that I made. So this was all great. The semester went on and I had this revived focused and thought that all my problems were solved. It was one of those things where you couldn't necessarily see the progress that you were making, but you could really, really feel it. The feeling that you have deep down when you know that you're taking steps and leaps towards a better you. But obviously in March, we all know what happens. Yeah, everything goes to shit. But I'll be completely transparent with you guys. This is one of the benefits of getting started with this self-development, self-improvement stuff early on. By this point, I had my training dialed in. I had my discipline pretty much on point and quarantine wasn't supposed to be a challenge for me. That's what I thought. See, going into the cough cough, I had everything that I needed to continue growing. In fact, even my family was kind of big, so I didn't really feel the social impact of being kept inside. I'd even go as far to say that at the beginning of quarantine, I low-key liked it. It was kind of convenient. And even though things in the world were going completely wrong, things in my life honestly got simplified in a pretty good way. But just like before, this is where the problems started. Comfort. I was getting comfortable and with everything that was going on, it just, it didn't help. Back then for me, it was such a laid back time. And instead of diving deeper into the discipline that I had built, I made the mistake of doing the complete opposite. Yep, I got back into the exact same bad habits that got me here in the first place, except this time, this time it was worse. Because of the timing with everything, schools were not allowed to drop your grades. So even though I wasn't one of those people that completely dropped everything and just slacked off, it was definitely hard to find a reason to keep pushing and keep, you know, striving to do better, knowing that, you know, there wasn't really anything on the line. On top of that, my weightlifting class got moved online. So what that really means is that the class became useless and I went from training twice a day to no time today. And this was a horrible combination at a horrible time that just really spun everything to come downhill. Fast forward now to my final year. I had still been carrying on these bad habits that I built up, but now everything had this overwhelming looming pressure over it. And that was getting into university. This was such an interesting time for me because on the one hand, I was regressing. I was going back to just going through the motions. But then on the other hand, I really, really wanted to get into a nice university program. And the programs that I was looking for were some of the hardest. And what got me through this time was focusing on what I love. It wasn't school. It wasn't even necessarily programming, but it was competition for sure. I knew that I wanted to do better than anyone in any class that I took and I wanted to dominate my graduating class. Now, I'll be honest, this probably wasn't the most healthy thing. I was super focused on comparing myself to others and was solely working towards beating every other student. But you know what's funny? Because it was working, I thought that I was doing the right thing. I was pulling high averages, was balancing extracurriculars, and had such a sharp focus that things like my health fell to the wayside. But honestly, it led to some of my greatest accomplishments. And you know what I learned from that time, and honestly, what I'm trying to implement now, is that 
sometimes working without balance is actually okay. Sometimes it's good to just dial in as long as you know that it's just for a season and temporary. And that's the key part that I missed. And man, that hit me hard. See, at this point, it's 2021, and I'm trying my absolute hardest to get into the best university possible. Honestly, even trying to remember this all right now feels like such a blur, because at this point, the cough cough had been here for a few months, and that had really started to take its toll. But on top of that, the intense dedication that I had to just solely focusing on trying to get into the best uni possible. And it sucks that everything was a blur, but honestly, this was one of the most productive times in my life. And, and even one of the goals that I set for myself was becoming high school valedictorian. All things considered, there is still something that I remember so clearly, like, like it was yesterday. And that was that I told myself I was willing to do anything and everything to become high school valedictorian. So as the months passed on, I achieved more and more, which then pushed me to do more, which then yielded results and made me achieve more and the cycle just continued and continued. I was going above and beyond wherever I could, taking on every single new opportunity that came my way. And even though it was tiresome and grueling hard work, despite everything, I did it. I became high school valedictorian. And after the photos were taken, the grad ceremony finished, the flowers were given out and I accomplished exactly what I set out to do, I was left so burnt out. See, despite loving competition, I wasn't doing what I loved and I felt super unfulfilled. See, this was supposed to be it. The big break, achieving everything and it didn't. In fact, it didn't really feel like anything. After graduation and going into first year, I really struggled to get things back on track. You know, I built up this mental image of who I was supposed to be. I had this really large expectation that I just no longer could fulfill. And there's no way of sugarcoating this, it just really sucked. All throughout first year, I'd tell myself, oh, you just need a little bit of time to get back into the swing of things. But after four whole months of telling yourself that, it starts to become kind of hard to trust yourself. And you know what's the crazy part? That's not even the worst part. What made this even more difficult was the fact that this expectation that I had for myself, I had kind of ingrained in my head that other people had this expectation for me as well. When I met up with friends and family, I always had to give the white lie of, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's fine. While in reality, I had no idea what was going on. I blamed myself a lot of the time because I told myself that I had, you know, done such amazing things. Why wasn't I able to keep this up? Why was I not feeling fulfilled with any of the things that I was working towards? And why was even doing the small things so hard? It just, it just didn't make sense to me. And while I love to say that I found some magic pill that gave me the solution, I didn't. And this feeling lasted me all throughout my first year of university. And uh, it was hard. By the time I finished my first year at uni, I was out of the double degree program that I was in. Now, it wasn't complete darkness. I finally got back into loving the gym after so long of neglecting my health. I won some awards at uni and even secured a tech mentorship with Uber, something with a 5% acceptance rate. But things never felt normal. It always felt like a piece of the puzzle was missing and that I was never living the life that I wanted to, if that makes sense. And very quickly, my habits of constant comparison and intense imposter syndrome just really amped up when I got into the Uber program, but I still pushed through and took things day by day. It finally felt like I was starting to actually make progress. And after nearly a year of uncertainty, I was just taking the small wins where I could. It felt like things were actually starting to turn around. And before I knew it, something absolutely crazy happened. Going into my second semester of university, I knew that I had to make a change. I had to stop feeling sorry for myself. I had to get up off my I had to actually make a change. I came to such a simple conclusion and realized that no one was going to make this change for me. If I wanted to make the change, I had to do it for myself. And I finally got back that spark that I had in grade 11 when I was rising and grinding and going to the gym at 5 a.m. But this time, this time it felt different because I've had the high highs and I've had the low lows. I've felt the praise and approval from everyone around me and I've also felt some of the lowest and darkest self-doubt. This time, it wasn't some video that made me want to make this change, but it was something that I wanted to do for myself. So that's exactly what I did. I shrunk down my circle to only the most important people, and as for everyone else, 
I cut out the noise. Next, I focused on work that actually excites me and something where I can feel the tangible impact that I'm having. And don't get me wrong, the last thing that I'm gonna share is a complete game changer, but those two things alone changed my mindset so much. You know, I was actually starting to think positively again about my future and the things that I had going on. I started comparing myself to others in a more healthy way that doesn't discount at all any of the things that I've done. And honestly, I've never felt more competitive than I ever had with a hunger to beat myself from yesterday, as opposed to random people from LinkedIn. But this last thing actually took me from the trenches to being on top of the world with so much left in store, making me feel alive again. See, despite all the challenges, both physical and mental, the burdens I put on myself and the unrealistic standards I set, even for, you know, an overachiever like me. I made one critical choice that changed my life forever. And before I tell you, please just take half a second to subscribe. It's free and you can always change your mind. I developed a community online and in person. Now, I know you might think that's kind of underwhelming, borderline stupid, but throughout everything that's been going on in this entire journey, I've had a very small group of friends that have been pushing me to be my best self, even when I wasn't. I've always been the type to keep my circle small, but at the end of the day, they had their own lives. We live kind of far away from each other. And you know, there's only so much that they could have done. I'm telling you guys, this all changed this October when I joined an online group of young entrepreneurs that are also getting after it. Man, I can't describe to you guys how at home this felt. Talking day in and day out with people that are on the same path as you, that are just as obsessed with business and success as you are, and people that are genuinely getting after it. And I know this sounds perfect, but there was a problem with this group. I mean, it checked all my boxes, right? It gave me a community like no other, and man, I've learned more in this group than any lecture class I've been to. But I'm a broke university student, and the membership to be a part of this group was a quarter of my monthly rent. I mean, I didn't know what to do. I mean, this was supposed to be it, the missing puzzle piece, the, the thing that I needed. But I mean, like I said, broke college student, literally had a negative net worth. So I sat down and I thought about it. I thought back to those months in grade 11 when I was waking up at 5 a.m., going downstairs into the cold gym and working out while everyone was still asleep. I thought about the countless hours I spent throughout the night working in grade 12, even though my grades were good enough. I thought about how comfort and mediocrity had destroyed me before and how doing the polar opposite, taking myself to the absolute limit, I almost did it again. And something that I realized throughout this whole two year journey, something that a year ago I would have never done, something that honestly I took way too long trying to figure out. When I'm outside my environment, having to maneuver the discomfort, when I'm all in on the thing that I love most, when I'm surrounded by like-minded individuals that are getting after it day in and day out. On top of all the ups and downs that it took, fighting to get to this point, betting on myself was really the only option. And that's exactly what I did. I bet on myself. Be sure to subscribe, comment your biggest takeaway, and check out this video here.